Hey everyone. So I received a download, was it yesterday or the day before, and I just haven't gotten the opportunity, quiet opportunity, to come on here and um, relay it to you. And it's not about anything with the current energies. I mean, this is just a general um, topic that needs to be discussed more and maybe evaluated more um, and thought about more. I think... Um, a lot of times in our day-to-day -day life and just being in engrossed in the matrix from the time we're born that we get into these we get so ingrained into these belief systems that they become normal for us so like we don't really question them or we'll question them but we don't really make any effort to maybe move in the right direction of actually changing them and I'm talking about the deep-seated ones like our education system and they brought this specific um, topic up to me the other day, and I know, I've i always been interested in education. After I got my history degree, um, I was like, what am I going to do now? Like, you only have so many options. So I was like, I'm either going to go to law school, but then I got pregnant with my son, so I was like, that's going to be too much for me. Like, what else, what other options do I have? So I ended up... Um, going back to school and getting my master's degree in secondary education and then after that I was going to get my PhD and teach at the collegiate level and once I got into the program and started really learning how our education system works and what type of um, uh, what type of outline they follow in terms of how they handle things and everything I quickly realized that I didn't really want to be a part of that but in the same respect we have to try to make certain steps in the right direction. It feels hard to believe as an individual, I can make this huge change in the education system in the United States of America, because that's where I'm from. So that's where I'm going to refer to. Like it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to like jump from the, I notice a problem, I want to help to the, I can change the world like energy like it's really hard to get there and actually believe it inside of yourself but when we break it down when we really look at it um and for, at, on a smaller scale is how can we from the inside out make changes gradual changes just like the evolution of consciousness or the evolution of you know different animals um, coming into you know over time turning into another animal it takes a long time it's we've come a long way since we were burning witches at the stake evolution is not a, a, a overnight process and if we think about our school systems in that way and I'm just using school systems as an example but we need to look at this from every single belief system that's toxic in our culture we need to look at it from a smaller scale and then open our hearts to that larger I can change this on a in a huge way sense because you have to start small that's how evolution works and the example that my guides gave me were okay look at how school systems are structured they're structured as kids wake up in the morning go get to school around eight or nine o'clock or whatever sometime in the morning they spend their day at school doing being ordered basically told this is what you're gonna do this is your schedule for the day zero intuition involved you know what you're gonna do you don't have a choice you have to be there we're not teaching kids about intuition just throwing that in there even though it's not a part of what they um, initially said a part of the story no intuition involved in that keep that in mind and then we're going throughout our days and then we get off what we get off school at three o'clock two something between two and three o'clock go home and then have the rest of the day and then have the weekends does this system look familiar to you all school systems do in the system that we've had since the beginning of one room schoolhouses is this and it prepares us to be a part of this matrix control system of wake up in the morning, go to work. Uh, this, I know exactly what I'm gonna do all day long. When we wake up in the morning as conscious individuals, we should not have this, I know exactly what I'm gonna do every single day of this week. 
if you follow your intuition, there's no way to know. So basically what I'm saying is we have been brought up from the beginning to be indoctrinated that it's okay and normal to be controlled. That's the point I'm getting across here. The school systems prepare us for the matrix. They're a part of the matrix and they prepare us to be adults in the matrix and to accept it as normal and that it's okay. It's okay to spend almost our entire day away from our children and have other people raise them. We need to really pick these things apart and stop accepting them as normal. And then in a gradual way, make these changes. How can we make these changes? Maybe you're a school teacher. Maybe um, you can look at ways to teach consciousness to children in school. So I was very turned off about being a teacher because um, I just didn't want to be a part of a toxic system. But the more conscious I become, the more I realize that we have to be a part of this matrix. Like we live here and that's how we're going to make the difference as being lights and being examples. So say you're a teacher in the classroom and there's a child who like is having a hard time. It doesn't matter if they're having a hard time or not. Whatever it, the instance is with the child, if they do something right, you know how you reward a child if they do well on like a spelling test? Like gold star, let's go put the gold star up on the poster. We need to start rewarding children for making conscious choices. And when I say that, we need to start rewarding children for praising their peers when they do something well. Not only does it feel good to praise somebody else, not, but it also lifts that other person up. So everybody's vibration raises in this. Anybody who's watching their vibration, vibration raises because they're connecting to that energy. We're teaching children that. The more we teach children, like just like they want to get that gold star for the spelling test or that trophy for doing well in a sport, they, they like that um, satisfaction. And then they're going to start realizing that the satisfaction really isn't in the gold star. It's in the way that they're treating another individual. It's, in, it's, it's about the energy and they're going to feel that. They don't even have to consciously know or be able to express that in a verbal way. They're going to feel that they're doing the right thing. And when they do that, it starts to become a belief system. It starts to become a habit. So now you're, we're raising conscious children in education systems to be, to praise other children, to do this. And I'm not saying it's going to be that simple, but I am saying that when you make things a habit and you, and you connect these children with what they can feel by acting in that way, by being caring and compassionate, they're gonna resonate with that energy and they're gonna wanna do more of it. And then it's gonna be the cool thing to do, like, man, I did this great thing for this person today. And like maybe once you start to become an adult, you don't get a gold star for it or you don't get praised or rewarded for it. But now it's just such an integral part of your life and it's a new belief system that we're integrating into the classrooms. We need to think about things like, Every single child, child seeing a counselor at school, whether we think that they have emotional issues or they come from a great home or not, it is important for a child to be able to express themselves. A child could come to from a home that's upper middle class, no financial issues, both parents are married, and they're still going through stuff because guess what? We're all humans. They're still going through stuff. And they should be able to express that. And if they don't want to, if they sit in there and they don't want to talk about it, that's okay too. But it's the fact that we have this as like a, have this instead of like a, a study hall or an elective, like this is mandatory. Every single child is, has the availability to a counselor and they just sit in there and maybe they have nothing negative to say and they just bond with this counselor. It is so important to make connection a priority in our school systems and with our children because our children are our future i have such a huge passion in this area and i always have i was going to homeschool my kids and then i realized like it wasn't for me but why was i directed why was i gravitating in that direction like what was it about me and how children learn and my gravitation towards education I've always knew I was going to be a teacher and a mother when I was a child I, those were the two things I was so sure about all the way growing up 
So in my mind, I'm thinking matrix wise, I'm going to be an educate. I'm just going to be in education. I thought I was just going to teach college students because I didn't want to teach little kids. The only little kids I have patience for are my, my own kids. Like this was my mindset at the time. <laughs> and, and, and then, then I started learning about conscious parenting, unschooling. I read a lot of books by John Holt. He's a, gr he's like the master of unschooling. If you ever want to really pick apart like he would observe children and then see how they learn and how they actually can learn on their own without us forcing things down their throat or using this methods of memorization and stuff um, to um, like force them to learn but they're not really learning because they don't retain the knowledge they just memorize and forget it's just these old toxic ways of teaching our children like looking at everything from a different angle and I have so many different ideas in terms of how we can um, change the education system I'm not going to mention them all in this video because the point I'm really trying to get across and the point that um, my guides were wanting me to get across in this video is to spark some seeds and whoever may watch this that we have to start carrying ourselves around children and interacting with them in a different way to teach them how to be more conscious, how to be more compassionate, how to raise their vibration, and in, in doing so, raising others' vibration, and showing them that the best way to raise your vib vibration is to be thankful, and to be loving and giving, because the what you give, when you give, the universe gives. What you put out is what you get back. The more you give, the more you will get back, and then you're not going to get it you can receive abundance in, in so many different types of way. But anyone who has reached the level in vibration and is to the point where they're watching videos like this and watching other YouTubers do videos about consciousness, they know that the real currency is in your vibrational currency and how you feel on a moment to moment basis. And this is what we need to teach kids. So they stop obsessing about profession, about being a professional baseball player. Not that that's a bad thing, but why do you want to be a doctor? Why do you want to be a lawyer? Because you're truly passionate about it? Or is it about money? Is it about status? Is it about how I look? And this is how we teach our children when we act in certain ways and we carry ourselves in certain ways. When we put material items on a pedestal, when we think that we need to work harder and we need to be miserable five days out of the week just to live for two days. But really the one day on Sunday, we're not really living because we're worried, we're, un we're stressed out about the fact that we got to go to work the next day. Like, what are we teaching our sh children? What are these belief systems that we're we're ex still experiencing so much in our culture like how can we change things in the most crucial way starting with the kids it's starting with the kids raising compassionate conscious children this is huge and the universe is ready for people to step up into this movement and i'm definitely going to be one of those people my boyfriend, a.k.a. Twin Flame, um, we have a soul mission and children are a huge part of that. Um, he's also, he's actually also a school teacher. So yeah, we both were called to that and then we came together and just had that commonality and it's part of our soul mission and I feel like a lot of light workers are going to be coming to the light and into the light of understanding what their mission is here. Twin flames aren't the only ones with missions. Every light worker has their own individual missions. Then they have their missions with others and their soul group. There's all, and some people's missions is as simple as just being as happy as they can on a day-to-day -day basis and living their own solitude life and meditating a lot and keeping their vibration high so they can hold space for those who are ascending and those who are still in the matrix that are so lost and going through those cycles. This information is so important. So I hope this video will spark some inspiration, some inspiration in that, um, just in the evolution of dismantling belief systems in our culture. And children are such a huge part of that. We have to step up in, in this, we have to make changes in the school systems. The school systems are like a priority in, 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 on my path. And I'm hoping some more people can jump on board. And I know it's not an easy one. 
actually heard, I can't remember what state it was, maybe Illinois, um, just got rid of, no, maybe it was Florida. I can't remember. It was one of those two, I think, that just got rid of Common Core in their education systems and they're seeing really great results. I don't know if it was private school, public school. I just saw a quick article about them getting rid of Common Core and it's a great thing. Look at all these standardized tests that are like completely crushing teachers, schools for their funding. Children hate them. This year, my son, because his, we live right now, this is another reason why I want to get out of the area that I'm in. We live in like a lower income area with a poor school system. And because of that, my son had to take these tests multiple times. He would tell me his stomach hurt so he wouldn't have to go to school to take these stupid t standardized tests. In the second grade, he's coming home saying, I have a stomach ache. I was like, I thought you guys were done with testing. Like, he's the type of person that he wants to get out of it so he'll tell me his tummy hurts or he'll go to the nurse or something. <laughs> like, whatever. But, um, yeah, he was doing that because he was so sick of taking these tests. And I was sick of taking them then when I was in school. I was never good at standardized tests, but I always did fine in any written exam and anything else. Like, I would be just fine. But standardized tests would, like, kill me. And they'd be like, your grades don't, don't uh, match up to your tests. And I'm like, no shit, because your tests aren't created for, like, everybody. I don't learn the way you're trying to teach me. I don't take tests in that way. Why are we even evaluating students in a way where we're making them feel stressed out about learning? And maybe we just need to find ways where when they learn, it's actually fun and interesting and something that they want to do. I mean, I could go down a whole, I mean, I could talk for hours about this kind of stuff. I'm really passionate about it. But that's the download they brought um, for to me and I hope it sparks some insp inspiration in somebody who watches this I know that they want this message to get to people so I love you guys I'll be back on tomorrow and I really appreciate you listening and I hope that um, it resonates if you're interested in any of my services my uh, website is kelseyfranks.com and you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram just search Kelsey Franks Love you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day.